Awesome. Sorry about that. Uh, so today we're going we're joined by Annie from the Host Co. And we're going to be covering how to master your upselling strategy. Uh, just to get started, just a little background on StayFi. It's we're a technology company whose mission is to enable every short-term rental operator uh, to become more independent, vibrant, and profitable through developing their own brand and becoming less dependent on third-party OTAs like Airbnb and Verbo. Uh, and the main way we do that is through a Wi-Fi marketing tool that enables short-term rental operators to collect valuable guest data, not just from the booker, but everyone staying in their short-term rentals. And then we have all the tools you need within StayFi, like email, tax marketing, this new homepage product, which we'll touch on today, uh, to make it easy for guests to rebook your brand directly again and again, and build up that list of loyal guests who want to stay with you over and over again. We also have some cool Wi-Fi tools that let you monitor the status of the internet, monitor occupancy, and just make sure you can manage uh, Wi-Fi across a diverse range of short-term rentals. Uh, yeah, here's just a summary of our services. So number one, we help you collect data from everyone staying in your rental through a Wi-Fi login, just like what you've seen at a coffee shop or airport. So name, email, phone number, uh, birth date from everyone staying with you. We have the text and email tools to make it easy to market to all these guests. Uh, we'll make sure the internet's also fast and reliable in all your properties. And finally, this is just going to build up your own brand uh, so that over time you can reduce your dependence on third-party channels and build up this list of guests who you can direct to book your properties directly with you. Now I'll hand it over to Annie to introduce herself and the host co. Hey, everybody. I am Annie Sloan, CEO and co-founder of The Host Co., um, and I'm not only CEO and co-founder of The Host Co., I am a longtime short-term rental super host, uh, and my co-founder is a longtime property management uh, company owner. So um, when we talk about our software, we also have seen so many of the problems that you have. So I look forward to talking about that and also talking about how The Host Co., you know, we do upsells, that's what we do, but how that is a big part of direct booking and how uh, amenities can not only be guest experience, but they can be a really big piece of the equation of people returning uh, and a part of your marketing. And uh, our mission at the Host Co. is we're a retail solution designed to help hosts sell uh, their products and services in short-term rental spaces. Uh, and instantly offer hotel level amenities in your rental and make up to $20,000 more a year per listing. Yes, that is, you heard that right. Um, and our approach is, first of all, keep it simple. Uh, we are a part of your larger software picture. So um, everything we do is as easy as eBay or easier. Uh, everything is personalized and um, we start you help. Sorry, my this was in the way. Uh, selling instantly. Again, our whole thing is, Let's make this the easiest part of your software stack besides StayFi. Um, and, and then include everything very flexibly, so easy and flexible. And everything that um, constitutes upsells, and we'll talk about that from late checkouts to on-site sales to parking passes that you sell out every day to rentals on-site to on-product sales and more. Um, they're all different types of upsells, and uh, those different types fit for different types of listings. So let's get into it. Yep. So, you know, how this all came about and kind of why we have this partnership with the HostCo with StayFi is that we launched a new product called the homepage. And you can think of the homepage as a link tree, if you've ever seen one of those, for each one of your short-term rentals. So it's a standalone web page that every guest is redirected to after they log into the Wi-Fi, and it is property specific. Um, and these web pages not only are a place that guests get redirected to after they log in, they're also standalone websites that you can share outside of that Wi-Fi login experience, such as uh, pre-stay through your, let's say, PMS messaging or through email and text marketing after guests access the Wi-Fi. And on this page, you can have several types of buttons that are custom or personalized for each property. You can have access to a guidebook a link to book that specific property, again, a link to your website, and then most importantly, a link to upsell tools. 
Uh, we launched the homepage with two upsell partners built into the product. One of them is Viator and the other, most importantly, is the Hostco. And so through this integration, when you set up the homepage in StateFi, you can turn on the host code for all your properties automatically. And we will go ahead and create these host code shoppable stores for each home that you already have in StateFi and even put in the link for each button for that specific property. So it's all done for you. And the host code stores, which Annie will cover, will come stocked with all of their partners already loaded in there. And then, of course, you can customize your own goods and services, which Annie will dive into kind of what are the most popular types of things people are selling, what seems to work, and then most importantly, how you can actually message to guests so they actually go ahead and purchase uh, the things, whether they're your own or from partners that are offered in your store. And the host code is always free, free through StayFi. So when you sign up, you know, uh, they just take a commission from all the sales that are made and Annie will cover that as well. Um, this is just a visualization of kind of what the Wi-Fi experience looks like now within StayFi for guests. Uh, just like today, they join the Wi-Fi network, they enter in their information, and now they're taken to this standalone homepage website unique for that property, where, of course, your host code link will be there. Uh, and then, of course, through our Wi-Fi uh, email and texting tools, you can also follow up with guests to send them back to this host, uh, to this homepage so they can access the amenities through the host code. Uh, and then the homepage and host co are also available to send to guests prior to the stay, which is super important when you want to sell things like early check-in, since obviously guests need to pay for that prior to the stay in order to access it. Uh, here's just kind of an example of what a host co store looks like. So when you turn on the host co, which I'll actually show you later how to do within StayFi, uh, we'll create these stores. Here's what a store looks like. Uh, there's always these... Uh, there's kind of two types of products. One are requests to you. So those are things that you can approve or deny, whether it's an extra guest or early late checkout, and then there's all their partners. And you just want to talk a little bit about kind of like how these host ghost stores are made and like which products are default and which things are people typically add uh, later on. Yeah, so um, we have a few different types of products uh, that are immediately brought into your store. Um, the first of which is local services and vendors, and that's vendors that the host co has pre-vetted for your area. We base that on zip code. So anything about 20 miles from your zip code, you will see. Those products are generally uh, very large contractors. So for example, Chef, we use the same uh, Chef services that Marriott uses. For uh, massage, we use the same Soothe and Zeal, the same partners that Hilton uses. So what we're doing is we're taking a lot of things that you see available in hotels and using that same, same contractor set to bring them to you in-house. We then also vet uh, local providers if they are, one, obviously insured, cancellation policy, great reviews, and we've seen them selling uh, on the host code before through our hosted providers. So it's very easy for us to identify, oh, that's a fantastic partner in uh, in Joshua Tree, right? There's a Reiki healer in Joshua Tree that keeps getting booked. We will contact them and vet them so they are in every store on the platform. Um, you will also see in the store a couple of links out to affiliate products. So uh, baby, equip, um, baby equipment, uh, we have an AI concierge where your guests can go through and look at all the tickets available, um, et cetera. There are a couple other ones of those. We're adding uh, eSIM cards for areas like Orlando. And with any of these services that are booked, you as the host make uh, a profit, either 5 to 10% of the total amount that your guest spends. And you're doing none of the work. And I will explain how uh, the vendor is set up past that. So that's one type of thing is host co-vetted services. Uh, another, as Arthur mentioned, is services that you provide, which we call uh, host-owned services. Those services are generally something that you personally provide, or you have a vendor that's likely in your kind of ecosystem already that they provide. So examples of that would be mid-state cleaning. Um, and of course, we push that message out. You can attach your cleaner's info. It will text them and say, this person is interested on a cleaning at this day, at this time, in this location. Can you do it? Um, it might be your sister who's a portrait photographer and everyone coming to the North Carolina beaches wants photos on the beach, you know, and they're matching outfits, right? Um, all the things that essentially you can do 
one category there is also alterations. So those are things that you really are in charge of. Things like pet fee, extra guest, early check-in, late checkout. And some people will do that through their PMS and they they should continue to. But other people, we can do it um, much faster. Like we can do it much faster and cleaner and easier than something like Airbnb. Um, another category that we see under host owned products is rentals. Uh, bike rentals, boat rentals, you can, within our platform, attach insurance to those. Um, we soon will have a thing where you can upcharge for insurance and we push that rec over to Rental Guardian. Um, rentals of things like um, outdoor movie night projector. Uh, you can you can rent things for $0 on our platform just to keep track of a terms of service that you want to share and who had it last, all the way through pool passes, parking passes, uh, things like that, where we can do inventory management per day for you. And then lastly, sale of on-site goods. So sale of on-site goods, I think a lot of people assume that's what upsells are, right? Um, that actually represents a pretty small category of what people sell. Um, very common things there are firewood, um, baskets of snacks, et cetera. So um, things that really pertain to that location, uh, on site. And we have ways to gate information from the guest in that category. Like, um, hey, your guest is not going to get the code to that closet until after they make a purchase, or they're not going to get the information they need to find that firewood until after purchase. And that category as well can include things like inventory management, where it will ping your fire guy when you're down to two bundles of firewood and say, running low on firewood, come and do a, a reorder. So each category has a lot of bells and whistles that really pertain to that specific category. I think that's most of them. Um, we may we may discover a few more as we go on. Yeah, I'm sure people have questions of things they want to sell or vendors yeah. they want to integrate. I'll say with StayFi, when you turn on the host co, these are the four uh, property manager or host owned services that are automatically created, which are pet fee, extra guest, early check in, late checkout. They will be for each store. And then of course you can go in and turn them off if you don't do one of them or don't want to, or do it a different way. Uh, and then of course you can also change their price parameters, who gets to request, who gets to approve it. And it's unique for each property, right? So you can even have the you know early check-in request go to different people, depending on which store uh, their guest is requesting it in. And then all those other, uh, provider owned services, right? You can turn on or off as well if you don't want to offer those. Um, so talking about what are upsells. So I, I mentioned this on the previous slide too. Upsells are definitely not nickel and diming your guests, right? They're not saying, oh, look at our stuff for sale. See what we have for sale, right? Um, they're not uh, selling a single toothbrush unless you're a hostel, right? Um, as hosts, you are providing the best possible hospitality you can offer. Um, so upsells are things, when you go to a hotel, they say, would you like a massage? Are you interested in spa services? Would you like room services? Are you interested in the things that you see when you check in right there next to you? Oh, you forgot your sun black. Oh, you need extra uh, beach towels, right? Things like that. Um, we really look at upsells exactly the way hotels do, which is they are uh, an upgrade and providing more for your stay. Um, if that is, again, curated amenities, on-site upgrades, hey, fresh flowers, uh, mid-stay clean, rentable products, even those alterations like pool heating, um, treating them like, oh, we have pool heating available. You know, that's kind of a, a funny twist on that, but all of these things um, your guests know there is a payment for things, obviously, like massage or mid-stay cleaning, but making sure that upsells really become um, uh, something that positions your listings as something extra beyond what other listings can do. And how do you recommend messaging that you have these offerings? Do you see people integrated into the actual listings on their website, on OTAs, and then how, uh, how, what are the best way to share some of these items uh, once guests have made, or once someone has made a booking prior to stay? So we always recommend sharing that you have a store and you have services available right after booking. 
uh, you know, sharing your StayFi dashboard and saying things. And we have templates like this that uh, we can share with everyone. But hey, we're so excited to have you stay. And you can put this in your automated messaging. Um, we're looking forward to you staying. If you'd like to add any amenities or services, such as massage, chef, um, golf cart rental is a is a big one as well. Um, check out our store. So you are just telling them the things that they might otherwise have to go and start Googling or the things that immediately they're going to start asking you about, right? So often what happens with amenities is your guests might need them. If it's a golf cart rental or it's a girl's weekend and they want four massages, they're going to start asking you, hey, do you know what, what the best massage is in town? Or where can we, you know, where can we get, we're going to have a family reunion dinner with our two families. Where can we get a hibachi night guy, right? Um, you text back and then they text back and say, oh yeah, that person didn't answer. Do you have another person? And then you text them again and then they text you and they say, oh, is, are you sure that's the last four numbers of that phone number, right? You end up doing all this really operationally inefficient stuff with your guests. Um, that you can automate that doesn't seem like you are being less hospitable. It actually seems like you're being more hospitable because you're telling them uh, right away all of the things you have to offer. Um, the most successful property management companies and hosts that use us also communicate this seven days before arrival because that's when someone is, again, starting to think about the trip, right? So, hey, you're seven days out. If you'd like to book any services, um, do so now or head on over to our store um, because a lot of services have lead times as well, right? So three, four days, generally someone can't get a massage an hour later or they can't get a Reiki healer on the same weekend that they're having their girls weekend. So um, making sure you communicate that. Then uh, with the StayFi dashboard, after they check in, they will have that resource, that tile or tiles always available to them to use while they're there. There are a lot of things that can be used while you're there. If it's on-site sales, uh, services that you can book the next day, et cetera. Um, and, you know, this is something that I don't do for my own properties. And I don't suggest it unless you have um, perhaps a really large rental, like, oh, we've got 15 rooms in Orlando, right? Um, we've had uh, we've had users who've used this when during checkout saying, hey, if you'd like to tip your cleaner, here's where you can do so with their host coast store. Um, we had a user say recently, and this blew my mind because I never thought of this use case, but I, I find it really fascinating. He said, we're actually able to lower our nightly rate slightly because we were able to lower our cleaning sleep, cleaning fee slightly. Um, and our, our cleaner is happier because they're getting their own, they're getting, I mean, in those huge spaces, $1,500 in tip, right? And your, your cleaner can also see that right when that comes through. So just another interesting use case. Yeah, I think it's so important to really, you know, even though you will, if you sign up for the host code and StayFi, we will create the stores, add them to all of your home pages that everyone will have access to. So many of these things require ordering in advance, or obviously to prove early checking in advance. Uh, and I think something that Annie shared with me before that's really important is to make sure you message the specific things that are available. Not to say like shop our amenities or shop our services, because guess, you know, Unless if you say golf cart, early check-in, all those things, that's what's going to increase conversion. And I also definitely recommend um, when you create home pages in StayFi and get the host code and log into the host code, you will also get the links directly to the host code stores. Um, when you're trying to sell something, I would encourage you to send them directly into the host code store, not make them go to the StayFi homepage and then click another button to go to the, the store, right? Uh, the homepage is really to show all the links for the guests, but when you're messaging specific products, definitely send them right to the store. Um, I know you have some more benefits you want to share here, so. Yeah, benefits. And also uh, the great thing is with messaging too, is each uh, item in your store has a specific link. If you go to the guest facing store and click on a product, it has its own website. So if your guest says Friday night, 11 PM, you're out to dinner with your spouse and you have one guest who's saying, Hey, can we get a late checkout? You can just text them the link to purchase it. It takes care of all of the purchasing. You approve their request, et cetera. That is the fantastic thing. Or if you only are selling one product, you can put a link directly to that one product and you're good. Um, okay, so something that people ask all the time is, 
uh, obviously revenue. So the benefits of upsells, obviously revenue is when we have property managers who are having a payout of over $11,000 a month from us, and they're selling primarily late checkout and firewood, right? They have a lot of properties. They have a few properties with a lot of rooms as well, but um, it's pretty incredible how much that revenue can increase and become uh, a total part of that uh, revenue equation. I'd already mentioned the operational efficiency for property managers, just less going back and forth, uh, asking questions. And how that works very briefly is your guest is going to say, yes, I want to request, let's say it's a massage, right? Um, what happens is we hold their credit card info, just like a hotel does. And then we push off that request to the, to the vendor provider, to the massage therapist and say, Annie Sloan wants a massage on this date at this time, at this location. Can you fulfill this request? If the vendor says, yes, I can, we then unlock all the additional information. Great. Here's Annie's email, phone number, name, time, uh, contact her immediately just to let her know, if, to ask any questions, et cetera. That whole process can be your, your sister who's a portrait photographer. It can be you. Um, it can be your cleaner, right? Um, and you have oversight into all of these products. So what we're doing is we're taking something that a lot of us were already doing anyway, uh, just verbally communicating it and going back and forth. And when you have a lot of units, it becomes really operationally inefficient, right? Um, improved experience is another one. Um, but the the one that I think is the coolest and particularly in relation to StayFi is it is incredible for marketing. Uh, one, it is a differentiator in saturated markets. Yes, you can add in your listing. You can't put a link in your listing if it's on Airbnb saying, here's our store. But you can say, um, we have a suite of wellness services attached to our rental that are on, on automation. You can put a picture of your store. You can say, here are all the things we have available in addition to your stay, which is a huge differentiator. Um, it is a way to really create fantastic marketing for rebooking. Booking. So here's an example. We had a host in the Coachella Valley add a mobile tattoo artist for the week of Coachella. So a mobile tattoo artist who will do, you know, flash tats, right? First of all, we had to make sure that was legal is the number one thing. Yes, it is legal in California. The second part of that is that property manager sent out an email, a marketing email, four months before Coachella. Um, if you send out a marketing email, you know, there are 1,900 listings in that area and they all want to have the really high rates for the week of Coachella. You have uh, probably people sending out things that say, book early for Coachella, 15% off, right? If you have specific amenities that you can use for marketing, you know everybody opened that email that said mobile tattoo artist available at our property for the week of Coachella. Even if that becomes the reason they book or not, it's a reason for them to open your email and it's a great way for them to remember your listing, right? Um, this is great for low season too. Let's say the holidays are your low season, right? Um, and you say, you know, this holiday season, we're going to have um, holiday decor available, right? And of, of course, it has a cost. We do all the decorating for you. Or um, this this season only, we're going to have, um, we had someone who attached beer burrows, uh, a vendor that does beer burrows, which are donkeys that walk around the property with saddlebags full of beer. Um, I mean, obviously, that's only for big properties and maybe for a bachelorette party or something fun like that. But again, the marketing of that is when you look to hotels, they do this all the time. They say, oh, we're going to have this art exhibit and it's only for a short time. Or right now we have this specific function. So it just gives you a way to create better marketing um, all the different seasons of the year and just get a lot more people to open those emails and not offer a discount. Um, I'm just curious for you. Can yeah. I ask Annie, can I ask a question? But for property managers, um, uh, do you, if someone, you know, books, let's say a late checkout, are property managers typically giving the owners a cut of that? Or are they getting all of that revenue incrementally just for themselves? How do you see PMs uh, splitting the revenue from any uh, sales? Um, there's, there's a few people do it differently to pay, depending on how they property manage, right? Uh, we have property managers that take in all, we just ACH pay out every month, uh, take all that revenue themselves, and then they will split it out uh, to their owners and say, you can get 10% of this. We have property managers who've said, this is entirely guest experience. 
So I am owning all of the revenue of that, which you're getting 100% of versus sending it out to others. We have property managers who uh, attach the bank account of their owner. So you can attach a different ACH payout for every single store. Let's say you're one property manager and you're, you're, you have 30 stores. Uh, you can pay out the owner entirely and then receive a portion of that. It has certainly been a request of, can I split the payout in one store, which is uh, something that's coming on our roadmap. But, um, you know, everybody does it a little differently, too. I mean, I'm of the mindset. It depends on how close you are with the owners, too. <laughs> or maybe as an owner acquisition strategy, if it's a competitive differentiator, right? So I guess, as you said, it depends a lot. But so basically some people take it all or some people split it or pay out owners. So it's really just a mix depending yeah. on how you, how you're set up. Yeah. yeah. And, and some people also, this has been a request as well is, you know, um, I want the owner to get paid 100% for the firewood that they, that is sold. And I want to get the, the money for the, for the late checkout because I'm doing all the work for that. So that's also on the roadmap, but in most cases at this point, you can just attach a bank account. No. Um, I'm going to make this really brief because we've talked about a lot of this, but positioning, always positioning upsells as a value add. Um, whatever you can give, give for free, right? Oh, if you're giving a welcome basket, still give a welcome basket, right? This is not a, everything has a cost to it. Often your guests will ask, hey, do you have an extra one of those welcome baskets, right? Hey, we, we don't have any snacks here. If you've got extra in a closet, you can sell them because they're already on site and just give your guests the information about that product on site. Either through code, we see people using wireless um, cabinet locks, RFID where you hold up a card. We've seen people even use baby locks, you know, for areas where your guests would never figure it out unless you told them. Um, if you do want to offer lower cost items, like um, we have properties in Death Valley where everyone is like, I'm dying for a tube of chapstick right? Um, don't sell $3 items because it's not worth your time to do that, right? Or their time. Bundle items. Like you can sell a hangover kit. You can go on Etsy and get 30 hangover kits branded to your properties and have them somewhere. And that's what you're selling. Um, guests love really unique things. Um, and the, 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 another part of positioning this is really listening to what your guests are asking because if you weren't able to do this before, you just might not have been paying as much attention to it. And what starts to happen is people will start with their host coast stores. And then a month later, they'll go, oh, you know what people keep asking me? Or, you know, what we should have because it would make our lives easier. For example, um, you've had people say, oh, we have uh, beach keys, you know, for beach gate in Florida and everybody loses our beach key. And we have to go out and replace the beach key every single time. If we can have an extra backup beach key all the time in a locked drawer, it's going to save us so much time and so much back and forth. Um, so here, uh, what? Oh, yeah, I, I think we already have a lot of questions over what are the top selling ones. So I think this is a great, great topic. Yeah. Um, trending upsells. Um, anything wellness. If you look at uh, the analog to hotels as well. Wellness in many areas is overtaking food and beverage, which is mind blowing to me. Wellness, massage, uh, yoga for a small group if they're there for the weekend, healthy catering or catering options. Um, and I'll talk about groceries in a moment because it's, it's a whole different thing, but sound bath, Reiki, right? Um, wellness is a really huge one. In a lot of uh, areas, we also offer things like manicures, pedicures. People have booked haircuts, believe it or not, on host coat stores. Um, and then uh, on-site amenities, rentals, boats, uh, bikes. Um, I really recommend also, and this is coming out, I think it's in the next month with us. Um, if you are in the United States, uh, don't rent a bike or a boat, sell insurance for that product. So you can sell um, a bike, you can, you can sell damage and liability insurance for the bike for $50 a day. But you're going to really limit your liability by saying the bike is free, but it is $50 a day for the insurance. Because um, there is a real big difference between selling or renting a bike and offering it for free. So that is a much better way to do it. And we can show you how to integrate that. Uh, obviously, in urban areas, there are things like parking passes. Hey, we have eight condos and two parking spots. You can sell those two per day. You can sell them in advance even and say, oh, it's sold out for the day. Do you want it for the next day? Anything that sells out in your store will also disappear. So that's a great thing to know. 
alterations are also huge. Um, extra guest pet fee, uh, pool heating, spa heating, um, all of those things, what we're able to do is automate it really quickly for you. You can just send them one link. Um, and then on-site items that sell well, firewood, phone chargers, sunblock, case of water, uh, on-site experiences like, oh, we'll do it. If you're very involved with your rental, um, on-site experiences make sense like, oh, we'll do a picnic for you or we'll deliver our own fresh flowers or, you know, there's a, there's a small upcharge for a dozen eggs. Uh, we have campsites that use us that they offer right when people book the campsite, we will set up your fire for you. We will provide the firewood for you. We will take down your tent for you, right? So those are really specific on-site experiences that pertain to that type of rental. Um, how to get started. Um, uh, I think Arthur has covered most of this. You create your stores through your Stafi dashboard. Um, when you do that, it's, we're going to create one store per listing and each store has a web link. It is essentially very similar to, I have an eBay store, right? That web link is automatically added in that uh, the dashboard for that listing. Um, Always go and just look over your store. Every single item can be updated. The prices can be changed. The descriptions can be changed. The photos can be changed. Um, you can make sure an item is request and approve. So again, um, if it's a request and approve item, it's going to send you a notification that says, hey, any salon wants a mid-stay clean this day at this time at this location. Can you do it? Uh, that request can also be sent to you via text. Uh, we have people that add it to their Slack channels, like if they have a cleaning channel, request channel for their, you know, whoever's in the property management office. Um, you can add as many notifications for other members of your team as, as you want. If you have a runner and you're like, oh, these people want extra cleaning. We have mid-stay cleaning. Oh, these these people want extra cleaning products. And we already have a package ready to go. We've do 2x the, the price of it. Um, you can add custom fields. So if you need another t-shirt size, if you have a boutique hotel or a listing that has multiple rooms or multiple cabins, um, you can, um, it, considered one listing, you can require that your guests include the address of the property or the name of the property or the room number of the property. Um, and then uh, we also have the the ability to add your own affiliate links. So that's a subscription upgrade. It's 15 bucks, but you can use it for free forever. But um, if you have your own affiliates, so let's say you got a West Elm couch that everyone loves, right? Or a Minoan couch or whatever it is that everyone loves, you can add your own affiliate programs here. We don't need to make any money off of that. And you can go crazy with everybody comes to this town and wants to go to this one ticketed event you can find the affiliate for that ticketed event and just add it yourself. And again, totally fine with us. Um, and I think we've talked about everything else in here um, and each type of rental th thus far. Okay, I think this is the last slide. Um, I think tips and tricks for successful upselling. Again, communicate that you have a store in your Stafi dashboard. Communicate it after booking, one week before. And please automate all of this through whichever PMS or OTA you use so you don't have to think about it. Um, and of course, if your guest has a specific question, you can text them, you can WhatsApp them, you can go through your messaging. Um, in your Stafi tiles, I don't know, and Arthur, you have to let me know. If you can have multiple, you can have one tile that says massage. You can have one tile that says uh, late checkout. Um, it's, it can go I'm going to show this. In okay. A minute, awesome. So um, do a it live can go, demo. Yeah. Oh, good. This, it can go to the same place and you can have one item or it can just go to the same store so they can see all of the other items that are for sale. Um, uh, mention, of course, specific items in your listing. Pin in our in your store. You can pin specific items to the top of your store if three always sell. Another thing that I'd recommend here is don't have over 12 things in your store. It becomes overwhelming if you have a ton of stuff in your store. Uh, it becomes kind of like the brochure rack at the Best Western where people, you know, you never look at all those, all that stuff. You're like, what is this doing here? Um, and also take out anything, like people don't go to Napa wine country to go bungee jumping, generally. They're going because they want a romantic weekend. So just look through it and be like, this doesn't really fit with my clientele or my services. And just make your store, again, you can start selling right away and you can see what trends and what sells, but you can pin those to the top. And lastly, again, just listen or have your 
you know, boots on the ground property managers, really listening to what your guests are asking for and think of how you can automate it through your store. Before And before I jump to the live demo, I just wanted to ask, let's say, you know, we have a day 5 p.m. sign up and they have 20 listings and they want some extra help. Uh, so kind of like what, what support do you guys offer to kind of guide them through how to add, you know, they want to add their own products or add their own you know, they work with this company in the area and they want to make sure they're included. How, how does that all happen? So uh, you can email support at the host.co anytime, anytime, night or day. You can also say, hey, support, I would like a one-on-one -on -one demo or can you call, let's, can we jump on a screen share and can you help me with my store? Our support team can do that anytime. They can answer questions for you there. Um, anytime we have a chat bot, what often happens is the chat bot goes to the same support people. So you can do it either way. Um, in terms of adding your vendors. So we have tons of people who are like, oh yeah, you know, can you add this local thing that we're always recommending? The answer to that is yes. Um, we have quite a long queue of people that we onboard, but we also see, oh, we have a lot of new users in Pigeon Forge. Let's bring on a couple more vendors in that area. Um, you can email vendors at the host.co to get those vendors into the queue. Uh, we do not take that many vendors because one, they need to be established. They need to have insurance, they need to have business, you know, business license, cancellation policies, and they need to just have established a record of not being flaky. Because I will say what happens sometimes is, oh, this this is an incredible provider. Um, that provider goes through two managers and by the time the host co contacts them to say we have a booking, they're like, what is this thing? So making sure that they have a commitment to, um, and of course, everything is on request. So you're no one is saying yes to anything until that thing has already uh, been provided. But we can onboard vendors. Uh, again, just making sure they have all of those check boxes ticked off. If they are your own vendor, so this is a real big differentiator too. Um, if it's your sister who's the portrait photographer, that is considered your own vendor. We are paying you, the host co is paying you as the property manager or host, and you are paying out that third party provider. So same thing for your cleaner. What most people do is they say, oh yeah, my cleaner, if they have extra requests, you invoice me for those additional cleanings at the end of the month. Um, but because we are not vetting your vendors, it is really uh, up to you. I mean, most people are already using many of those vendors that they're adding to their ecosystem, but we are paying you out as a host for those vendors. Uh, let me, oh, do you want to cover this case study oh, yeah. before I go into the live demo? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is just a case study on live free listings in the Poconos. Uh, they have 13 stores. Um, many of their stores have uh, multiple uh, doors within one store. Um, they have 13 stores. They did 80K in revenue with us in 2023. Um, they are getting consistently paid out um, over $10,000 a month. I think we, they started later in the year. Um, an individualized custom store for each property. With StayFi, it's already going to port in the image that you have in StayFi and the name of your listing. But again, anything that is really specific for that property, add that. They have it in automated messaging. This is a set it and forget it. They're like, we don't think about this at all. And we just get paid out every month, which is great. Um, uh, they're, again, their items are curated to their specific listings. If it's extra firewood, s'mores packages, um, late checkouts, et cetera. And they do have those top selling items pinned to the top of their store and they are not selling um, that many items, right? I think they have under 15 items per store. Yep, so now I will switch over to StayFi here. Can you see the StayFi dashboard that I'm sharing, Annie? A little bigger. So just to show everyone how you enable the host co and some of these things we've talked about in terms of maximizing your store's potential. So um, within StayFi, there's this new tab called Wi-Fi Experience, which is where you now customize uh, splash pages and home pages. If you haven't set up the home page yet, uh, because it's still being rolled out, uh, you know, there's a onboarding flow that will result in you getting to this page here and we'll walk you through each step. Um, but you can go back and add the host code anytime. 
Uh, you can find the host code under edit homepage template here. This is essentially where you're gonna design uh, the overall look and feel for those customized personalized homepages for each property. So here you're just deciding which buttons you wanna present. Down below, you'll see the host code here. When you toggle this on and hit update, that is gonna turn on the host code. We are going to create your host code account for you under your email uh, that you have with StayFi. If you already have a host code account under that email, let's say you created separately or before you had StayFi, then we don't make a new account for you. Uh, but let's say you've never used the host code, it will create an account. We will send a host code, uh, like Annie mentioned, the details for each property, because in order to create the stores for you, we need their address and most importantly, their zip code. We also will send a photo over. Uh, I would make sure prior to turning on the host code, you make sure that we have your address for each property or you connect your properties to your PMS and stay five, so we'll pull those in automatically. If you haven't done that, you'll just have to fill in the addresses on this page. So uh, you may hit here and there may be not all your addresses here. You just wanna make sure you add them. When I hit update, I'm gonna get an email that's going to ask me to sign into my Hostco account and create, you know, basically create a password for it. And then I will log in. Within there, you'll have the ability to edit each store. Um, what we will do on our end is we will, this will take a minute, uh, we're going to automatically add your, oh, here they are, Hostco store. We're going to immediately add the URL for each of your unique Hostco stores to your StayFi homepages. So if I hit this preview button over here, you can just see what that looks like now is there'll be a shop amenities button. And this is going to lead to the Hostco store for this property. So here's what was just created. Like Andy mentioned, this is the default for each store when we create them. It's going to have all of their local vendors enabled and we'll have four requests to you as the property manager or host, which are always extra guest pet fee, early check and late checkout. Those are ones that you're gonna to wanna to edit right away in case you don't wanna offer them. Or you, for instance, wanna do early check-in, but you want it to be four hours and $85 and you need to change who gets notified, right? Uh, so you can edit all of those things within your store. And then maybe you don't wanna offer haircuts but you can turn that one off, right? So you have the ability to change these. And most of these, the meditation, personal trainer, massage, mobile IV, these are local to this destination. Oh, well, some of like. these will, <laughs> yeah, some of these will always be there. The baby equipment, the massage, private chef and AI concierge are always there, right, Annie? Yes, those are uh, national products in the US. Yeah, the AI concierge is a really cool one because you'll get uh, 5% commissions, I believe, on anything here. And this one will just give you a, a itinerary with a bunch of affiliate links. And if someone clicks on these and books, you'll get 5% of that revenue, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a really cool one. And obviously this is something where you could get the link to the AI concierge for each property and send that in advance to guests, right? So you can pick and choose these items and send the specific URL for each one, right, Annie? Yeah, if you click on one, you'll see the URL in the in the title bar um, is the exact product. So you can just send uh, that link. I will also say a huge question that comes up here with early check-in you can change this to per hour and you can have, you'll see there's a little at the bottom of that. They can add multiples of those things per day. You can say early check-in 4 p.m. But we don't want to assume what your check-in time is already. So again, you can modify anything. Um, something that's really important here is your guest has to agree. I have read and agreed to this description. So um, you can add in there, you agree to all of these things particularly adding a cancellation policy or looking over a cancellation policy is a great idea because if someone says, yeah, we want a late checkout, you've gone to all the trouble of moving the next guest or making sure the next guest is, um, you have no next guest or whatever it is. When, if they if they call you 10 minutes before regular checkout and say, oh, we were able to pack up more, more quickly, right? Um, make sure you have a cancellation policy because you've already done that work. Their their credit card has already been processed. We our team will do uh, chargebacks. Obviously, we'll do cancellations, but it's just easier for everyone to make sure you have. A, and these, I think, we've added um, a cancellation policy of our own. But just make sure that you have cancellation policies for everything. 
Yeah, I think what Annie said is so important is if you're messaging to guests early check-in and that's the only thing you're selling prior, link directly to the item, right? Just so that there's less searching for the guests through multiple pages. Uh, jumping back into Stayify, so we'll add that to each one. Um, but like Annie said, sometimes it's important to message the specific items. So let's say you really want to emphasize a tour, let's say that you offer in each one. You can add a custom button here and you could say like Yosemite guided tour, description, whatever. If I add this button, I can, oh, did I mess up the button here? I just like an icon. I can go here and bulk edit home pages. And then under this Yosemite guided tour, I could add in the specific store link just to that. And that way, uh, guests will see that and maybe get drawn to that because they don't realize it's in the store. So by having a few extra buttons, it can increase the conversion rate of people clicking on these specific items. Or maybe you want a late checkout one that just emphasizes the late checkout because obviously that's a super high margin item where you get basically all the revenue, right? Uh, so those are great ways to update these home pages, and you can always, of course, always preview them here and make sure the way that you want. A few other things I'll just show you in here briefly is if you want to send the home page to each property to the guests in advance or other ways, their links are always available here, and then they'll find obviously the host code within the home page, and then within our text and email marketing tools, some very cool things you can do is in let's say you have a text message, which is a Wi-Fi welcome text, me text message sent to every guest when they log into the Wi-Fi. Here, you can dynamically insert a link to that property-specific homepage. So that way, they'll have access to the homepage during the whole stay, and they can go in, find the different links to the host code, and purchase those products. Same thing you can do in email marketing or in a welcome automation. You can insert dynamic links as well for each property. The way you do that, I'll show very quickly here, is in an email within the StayFi tool. Here's like the email that gets sent to every guest when they log into the Wi-Fi. Under insert custom fields, StayFi Wi-Fi guests, you can also insert the link to the homepage URL. So that way, even though you have one welcome email sent to all guests, no matter which property they're in, it will always send them back to the homepage, which you'll see here for that specific property. So then they can find, again, the link to the amenities, which will be the host coast store. Uh, so it's really important that you market this as many different ways as you can. So giving guests that link to the homepage, both through text and email, is a great way they just make sure they have persistent access outside of when they log into the Wi-Fi, right? And of course, the pre-stay messaging is super important. Um, yep, so this just sums up what I went through, which is... Uh, you want to market your upsells, you know, multiple ways. So guests, not just the book, everyone sees it. Obviously, PMS messaging or OTA messaging prior to this day is a great way to message early check-in activities you need to book in advance, other things that you want to advertise from uh, the host co prior to this day. And then once the guests are there, the great advantage of StayFi is now you can market those not just to the booker, but the whole group of people. Because maybe somebody else wants a late checkout who is not the booker, right? And so now when they log into the Wi-Fi, they'll see the link to the store. Would recommend if you really want to market, let's say, late checkouts, adding a second button that just links to that late checkout item in the host code. So guests know that you have it. Um, and then using text and email is another way to make sure that you're sending uh, guests the dynamic link to the homepage so they can have access during the whole stay. Now uh, we can go over to Q&A, which I know we have a lot of questions for you, Annie, so let me run through these. Um, is this being recorded? Yes. So we will send out a link to everybody and we'll have this published on our YouTube page as well. Uh, do you wanna just talk briefly, Annie, about non-US uh, users of the host code, kind of what's available outside of the United States? Yeah. Um, so you can start a host code store anywhere in the world. You can use any zip code as long as it is five digits long. It can be letters, numbers, et cetera. 
there's a little uh, drop down under state that says other. So the host co is now usable anywhere in the world. Uh, it is only on US dollars currently. Um, that is going to change very soon. 16% of our normal demo attendees are outside of the US. So we know that is the biggest request operating in Canadian dollars and euros uh, and pounds is uh, very, very high on the list for us. In terms of locations outside of the US, um, you're going to see a store that does not have any um, any any of our products in it yet. So it is going to be host owned products currently. Um, we have users in Italy who are selling their own cookbook because they run a retreat area and they have too many. They have attached their own uh, massage provider, et cetera. So it's totally usable elsewhere. Um, we will let you know if you want to email support too and say, let me know right away when this is available in multiple currencies. We'll do that. In terms of language, because our stores are web-based, there's nothing to download. Um, it will translate to any language um, because it's translated on Chrome or Safari. It's using their translations, not ours, but generally works very well for any of those um, environments. And we also do, it's a big question that might come up, tax compliance. So Stripe is our processing partner and they do tax compliance right now. Um, you'll see that items in your store are in categories. There are services and services and products are in two different categories. In the US, uh, everywhere, you'll always see a line in the guest checkout that says tax, uh, sales tax. Uh, most of the time it's going to say zero because we don't do so many product sales. In many states, you're going to have to hit a tax threshold to turn that on. Right now in Europe, because we are not, it's operational, but we are not launched in Europe. Uh, we get emails for VAT taxes from Stripe. So that will also be something that is changed when we go to multi-currency. What type of products, you, you kind of answered this before, but what, what's definitely the most, not only the most popular products, but what are the most profitable products, let's say? You can answer oh, both yes. of those. Um, certainly alterations, late checkout, early check-in, pet fee, guest fee, um, parking spaces are very common. Most profitable um, are items that you sell that are host owned products. Um, uh, if you are taking care of them, it's fresh flowers. If it's, um, I'm going to stock groceries for you before you arrive. Um, a, a word on groceries as well. Uh, I don't do it for my own properties. Anything where someone has to get into the listing before the guests arrive, I would avoid completely unless it's you, right? Uh, and also people are so particular about groceries, but um, anything that is a host owned product. Um, a, a picnic by the river, a blanket and flowers and chocolates, right? There are a lot of guys who book a anniversary weekend that are like, ha, I don't know what to do, right? Flowers, chocolates. Um, it is against our terms of service to sell your own alcohol. You can have it delivered from someone who has a license, right? Alcohol delivery is popular, but those amenities um, and also firewood, interestingly, are really huge sellers with a, with a really big markup. Um, when a product is actually provided by a partner, you sort of answered before, but maybe just reiterate it again. Um, how is the payment handled? So when it's your own partner, it sounded like, um, you get paid out as the operator and then you have to reimburse the third party. But if it's one of your providers, you're paying out the third party directly. Is that right? Yeah. So if it's a host code provider, um, we pay them out directly. We take care of all of the messaging for um, all providers. They not only when they approve something, get all the information, they also get a calendar invite for Google. That'll also increase to other ones and a reminder 48 hours before the service. But if it's your own provider, yes, you are paying them out. What we suggest is just having them invoice you uh, at the end of the month and say, I did five massages this month. If you need to do it off cycle, um, we can talk about that as well, but generally um, it works easiest that way. Also, you're making a lot more money because you don't, you're not doing any of the payout. You're not doing any of the vetting, right? So if you do have someone that can do, and I would say experiment with those things. Um, if it's, oh, let's experiment with doing a romance package, right? Or a birthday decor. You could have your cleaner do that and you can pay them out, but since you're setting the price of your own things, if it is your, let's say your sister, the, the portrait photographer is a good example. You can say, I'm selling that for $700 if you want to, and you can pay out your sister $300. So the margin is going to be much greater when you're setting your own prices. Uh, in addition to having it on your Stay Fi homepage, 
Uh, do you see people include the host code and things like touch day or other guidebooks and kind of where do you see people also integrating the store into the uh, rental experience? Yeah, um, touch day all the time. Uh, we have a great relationship with them and we have a video on how to add it to touch day. Uh, Enzo connect. Um, we see people adding it anywhere that there's a guest facing um, anything that is guest facing, adding a tile there. Um, we have also seen people, and I think that the StayFi dashboard does this for you, but add information into their host coast store. So the guest has to go through their host coast store to like, hey, here are the restaurants. You know, that's very different for, but it's entered through the gift shop, right? It's entered through where people are going to actually see what you have available to get to that other information. You as a host can also add the restaurant you like, or you can add a discount code if you have a relationship with that restaurant. Or you can say, we've seen this as well. Hey, head down to Joe's Coffee Shop and you'll get a free latte, right? Um, and you can say, just um, add it to your cart and we'll give you the code after this. Show them the code, right? And what happens if you've got a relationship with Joe from Joe's Coffee, that person's never buying just one latte. They're buying like five cinnamon rolls and two other drinks, right? So um, again, there are multiple ways to use it that you can get people into your store to see what's available. Uh, sorry, we have a lot more questions, Annie. So yeah, let me just try right. to. I mean, I can stay. Quickly. I don't know about you, Arthur. I just canceled. Yeah, yeah it's totally fine. While you were talking. Yeah. So. If someone pays for late checkout, um, which obviously will affect the cleaning schedule set in other platforms, uh, like how, what's like, I know there's probably many ways people operationally handle it. Like, how do you see, or do you have insight into how uh, property managers or or operators are handling kind of these these alterations like late ch late checkout? Yeah. Um, I would say if your PMS does it and connects to changing the checkout time, use them, right? Because that's going to be a benefit for you. Um, most people will, you can message your cleaner about it, particularly if you're only selling it with advance notice. Um, most people do it somewhat manually on the back end, or often if they do not have, um, if they do not have a check in the next day, they will just notify their cleaner and say, hey, you, can you do this late? Or if the cleaner is on those emails, the cleaner, if you have one cleaner, I mean, you have a cleaning company, you can also set it up with them. They're going to see the request. And in many cases, they're the ones that can approve it. So if someone, if you, let's say you have um, a late checkout on your, as an offering, when the guest sends a request, you can have that request go to you, go to your cleaner and go to even a third party. And um, whoever approves it first is the approver. So you can say, I'm just doing this for visibility and my cleaner is going to approve or deny every one of these because it's up to them, the schedule that they can do. Uh, and that as long as we have no one staying the next day, um, that ge is generally how that works. There is a little bit of manual for, er for early check and late checkout, generally pet fee, guest fee, pool heating. I mean, you got to know when to turn on the pool heating. But again, if we add it to a calendar, the person that is there will know. And you can specify in the terms or in your host code store how many days in advance someone has to request, let's say, late checkout, right? Yeah, and it will, um, every every product that requires advance notice, uh, you can even say, I need advance notice in zero days. So it will just be hours, but you'll, you'll know. It brings up a calendar when they check out. And if you say, I need three days advance notice for this, the next three days will be grayed out. So it is impossible for them to say, I want this tomorrow morning, right? Yeah, so obviously set the price. Since it's always going to require some manual work, obviously you need to charge something that makes it worth your time uh, to facilitate, right? So know what that price is. Um, I think we saw, and correct me if I'm wrong, the checkout flow, they always have to check some terms and conditions that you set for that product, right? So we answered that one. Yeah, there's actually um, two parts to that too. They have yeah. to sign your host terms and conditions with everything that you're specifying. They are also si signing the host co terms of service and privacy policy that say, um, you know, we are just like eBay. So we're saying um, uh, th your seller is responsible. If it is your product, if you're selling firewood, right? Um, also privacy policy is just, hey, we're not selling your info, et cetera, et cetera. Very common terms of service. Um, do you, this is a different, do you have any one, do you hear any negative feedback where a guest left a lower review because of something in the store, like 
check like check in like check out impacting Airbnb reviews. So I guess it kind of goes back to that: don't charge for things that intuitively should be free, given the the type of listing you're offering and, and the price for it, right? Yeah, um, I have not, believe it or not, heard anything negative. We have had circumstances where in West LA, the massage therapist couldn't find a parking spot for an hour and a half, right? And the person staying there is like, oh, you know, I'm so, you know, I'm so upset I had this massage planned. Generally, our support team will say, okay, great, we're going to take care of that. We will reimburse you. We're very responsive to any of those things as well. The thing... um, The thing that is kind of cool also with these things is, um, so previously you might have guests asking you questions and you have to say no. And it's you personally. And I think we've been there, all been there with late checkout where you're like, oh, can I get a late checkout? And they say no. And you're like, oh, that guy's kind of a jerk, right? So their opinion of you as a property manager actually is worse. But by having a third party, like an automated third party, when your guest says, I want to request this thing, and uh, their request is denied, their request is denied through the host co. So you are you kind of get out of being the bad guy when you can't do something. That isn't to say, I'm sure in the future, um, we have about 7,000 uh, uh, listings right now. And I'm sure as that grows, we are gonna come across circumstances where something didn't, you know, hey, they had a s'mores packet and the the graham crackers were all broken. Right. I'm sure that will happen in the future, but it's kind of um, I would also say similar to that could happen with any provider whatsoever. Right. So. And kind of kind of a big answer. Right. I'm curious in terms of like uh, payments, refunds, cancellations, uh, maybe just kind of clarify how the how host or offers get paid out through what mechanism and kind of how do refunds and cancellations work? Yeah, so um, your guest is going to check out with uh, 98% of users are going to see this on their phone. So the the store looks very simple on the desktop, but they're going to, it's optimized for mobile. They're going to say, yes, I want to request a massage, Apple Pay. They immediately get um, an email. They get a thank you screen, and then they get an email that says, great, we've sent in your requests. We will let you know as soon as we have any information, you're Um, Every, you know, your host has also seen this request or et cetera. Um, Really important to know that a request times out at seven days because that is as long as legally we can hold someone's credit card information. So if you're a host, make sure you're answering the sooner the better, right? When uh, the host or vendor says, yes, I can do this, the transaction is processed. In that transaction, uh, we as the host co add an 8% convenience fee. It is very clear before your guest even checks out, there's a line that says convenience fee 8%. And that is how we as the host co make money. We also cover all of the visa processing fees in that, which is about 3% plus 30 cents of every transaction, right? Um, when we process those funds, you as the host, you get an email that says you just made a sale. It shows up on your sales dashboard. Um, in your store, if you haven't approved it yet and you haven't seen an email, your host code store is going to say you have this many outstanding requests, especially if you have a lot of doors. It's going to say doors 7, 12, and 19 want a late checkout, right? That kind of thing. Um, uh, that is all processed and added to your sales dashboard. And then the host code pays you out your earnings on the seventh of every month for the month in arrears. So we hold on to that payment. Um, the reasons we hold on to that payment are not just we want to hang on to that payment. It is because of cancellations and chargebacks uh, and things like guests saying, oh, I don't remember. You know, it's going to show up as the host co is the seller of record. So it's going to show up in their credit card statement as the host co, right? Um we have people calling and saying, I don't know what this charge was for. Or they they hit, oh, you know, this is, I'm uh, disputing this charge. Um, so we hold those funds to make sure that everything is settled before we pay them out to you. Also important, if someone says, I'm going to dispute this charge, the host co immediately emails you and emails the, the guest and says, um, here's what was provided. Uh, here's the receipt for what was provided. And almost the entire time that the... the The guest goes, oh, yeah, I remember that now. Or, oh, yeah, my wife did that, right? Um, In the rare occasion where they're like, oh, I never got that thing, um, uh, we will then put a a contest it to the host and say, are you you sure they never received that thing? We'll also tell you there's a nice 
I wouldn't call it a layer of protection, but you've already vetted these people to stay in your property. You know, it's generally not like grifters coming through who are buying $200 massages. So there's just this layer of quality that has already been provided, which really decreases any sort of theft or grift in this situation. Um, next question. Uh, I'll clarify this. Can you confirm where you manage your store through the host course through Stafi? Stafi is just a way to create stores and sign up for the host code. So you turn it on. We will create a, Stafi, a host code account for you. We will pre-populate every property you have in Stafi will be added to the host code with the photo and the address automatically. You'll get an email that then you create a password and log into your host code account. And then from there, you will edit all your stores, you know, change the items, add your own, et cetera. Um, Someone asked if there's a way to check how many people click links. Right now, if we're safe by homepage, we don't have that. Something we're looking to in the future. Do you guys have any analytics for host or operators in terms of the store for any activity prior to a checkout? That is a really big request that is not yet available, but it is coming to see not only who clicked, but abandoned carts as well, and just how you can continue uh, modifying your store for uh, better sales. I will also say briefly, your store is going to have the local vendors in your area. We, when we vet a new local vendor, we add them dynamically to your store. So they're turned on. Um, we don't do that very often. You're going to, every couple months, you'll be like, oh, they added another blank. I would just maybe check it every once in a while. If you don't want any new vendors added at all, we had someone who's like, I'm on an island. You know, like even if it's on the mainland, it is very unlikely that people are going to come to this island. Um, you can email us again, support the host.co and say, don't, you know, turn off all new vendors being added to my store. So it, you, I would always check it once in a while for that. Also in, in the host co, uh, you can download all of your sales to a CSV. You can export it to your bookkeeper, right? Because another thing that's important is these types of sales are different than your nightly rate. So if you're selling a lot of stuff at the end of the year, you will get a tax form, I think it's a 1099K um, from Stripe. So again, it's it's like selling stuff on eBay. If you sell over a certain threshold, you get a tax return from eBay, which personally, I, I mean, you can then claim a lot more stuff too in a different way with that tax information. But to, just to let you know, um, when you sign up to be paid out, um, you are adding the information through through Stripe that says this is what I am doing. I'm I am adding items to sell. Uh, someone asked, I can answer this. Um, I'm unclear if we already have host code, but we don't have Stafi yet. So let's say you already use the host code and you're interested in adding Stafi, right? Uh, when you go to set up the Wi-Fi experience in Stafi, um, I'd recommend instead of toggling on the host code, um, because what could happen is let's say you made your Stafi account with a different email than your host code account. If the host code doesn't have that email yet, it will make another host code account for you with the email that you created StayFi with. So instead of, if you already have a host code account, instead of turning it on in StayFi, just add a custom button to your homepage template, write in whatever language you want to indicate the amenities you sell there. And then you just take your store link from the host code and paste it in for each property within StayFi. So you can link uh, to the host code within StayFi. Um, can someone ask if you can offer something in Hostco and charge it like per day? I'm not sure what that would be, but I would imagine you can specify how many days something would be and it's like by quantity, right? Yeah, you can do it a few ways. You can say um, uh, in the title, pool heating per day, and then in the description say for multiple days, add multiple to your cart. And there's not only a plus button, on that same screen, there's also a plus button on the checkout screen. So you can say, yes, I want three of these or I want two of these. Um, at this point, we are not connected to your actual booking. So we can't immediately say, oh, great, it's for four days because they, they book for four days. They will have to add that uh, to their to their screen um, and check out with multiple. I'm trying to think of other ways that people do that. But generally, it that's it. Or... Um, you can set different tiles that say um, pool heating three days, pool heating one day. And if that's going to be easier for you or people never read, even though they have to agree that they've read the description, sometimes we all know people don't agree. So um, you can add multiple tiles, particularly if you're not selling that much stuff. 
So an example of that is we often see people saying 60 minute massage, 90 minute massage, because that's a little bit hard, harder to do, or, um, you know, uh, barbecue dinner for two barbecue dinner for six, right? Again, they can go in and just do three of that dinner for two. But if you want to make it really clear, just add separate products. Uh, someone asked, what are the benefits of the HostCo Pro plan? Oh. I know with Safi, you get the basic plan for free, but why would you want to upgrade to the next plan with the HostCo? Uh, so how commission, the biggest reason uh, is we get a 7% commission on sales for all um, for all products on the free platform. So if you're selling $100 late checkout, you're going to walk away with $93. Every product uh, that you add a price you also see the calculation of how much you take home. So it's very clear what you're making. Um, uh, and that's how we as a company stay alive. I mean, we're not, that's not a, that's not making us bajillionaires. I will tell you that, right? So that commission plus the uh, the guest convenience fee that gets convenience fee of 8%. Um, the upgrade, it removes any commission from your store for the first thousand dollars per month. So if you are selling four late checkouts, um, you are now paying more than you would be on a pro account because it's $15. That's one reason. A second reason is affiliate links. You can add links to everything under the sun that you, if it's a restaurant or if it's an affiliate link for West Elm or um, I'm trying to think of, you can add your own baby quip affiliate link and you're going to make more money than if you use our affiliate link. You're going to make 100% of the revenue. It also enables... Um, uh, calendar functions. So adding services to your own Google calendars, and then we'll be adding Apple, et cetera. Um, someone asked, are you planning to tie in concerts, sports, events, tickets, which obviously would be, could be changing all the time, right? For like, what's in that area? Yeah, definitely. So you can do that now through the AI concierge that will link to um, ticketing, to tours, et cetera. It has a whole bunch of its own affiliate links nested within that. But um, certainly um, a re relationship with tickets is one and Fair Harbor has been another that we uh, will be adding over time. Again, we're not going to overdo it. Um, but if you have, the other thing is, if you have one thing that everybody comes to that area to do, um, you can go to, if you have a pro account, you can go, okay, I mean, you, StayFi has Viator, but let's say it's something, it's a ticket. Everyone wants to go to the Louvre when they go to Paris for the first time, right? You can probably find an affiliate for that and just put tickets to the Louvre as one of your tiles. And it's an affiliate link that pushes your guest out to uh, pay for that themselves. And no one has to deal with it as much. I will say one interesting product that we're vetting right now. I have to make, I, I'm not our, on our vendor team, but is um, tailgating parties in Texas. So they pull up to the house and they do like all the food truck, like parent weekend stuff. That's one of my favorite new ones. Um, I think a lot of these we've already covered. Someone asked how to add the custom button again uh, within StayFi, which I totally recommend if you're going to want to feature certain products and like link to the host go store multiple times, which is totally fine. Under edit a homepage template, you could go down to add custom button Here's where you could add, for instance, like request late checkout. I think that would be a really good one. And then you can back under the bulk editor, which is the button below the template editor. You can then um, put in the link. I didn't actually create it, but then you can put in the link uh, to late checkout for each property. So that you can go to that specific item. Um, and that would be a great way to do that to really merchandise those specific items. Um, other questions here. I feel like we covered most of these. Someone asked a uh, partner with a bus shuttle to an event. Um, that would be one where you could add them as your own vendor and then it requests to them and you pay them out, or you could have, uh, send a request to the host code to add them. And obviously they have to agree, but then they have to go through the process of being vetted by the, by the host code, making sure they have all the right, you know, legal uh, you know, cross all those bridges and then they can probably be added at some point. But I know there's also a queue for that, right, Annie? So that could take some time if they didn't meet the criteria. Um, someone asked about providing like discount codes for local restaurants. I'm sure you could provide like free items to folks in the host code that could be of anything of value that you want to provide, right? 
Yeah, you can put um, discount codes in a description. So they just open the tile and they see the code in the description. Or you can unlock that information so you know who's used it uh, by saying, add this item to your cart. It's $0. Uh, we'll send you the discount code directly to your email after you purchase uh, is another way to do it. Um, and then we have seen lately people add a store on the host code that is a private store. So meaning they're not sharing that store with guests uh, unless they do like an apology store or a discount store. So example is we had a, a property manager say, oh, we, we set up a store that we only share when our elevator is broken. <laughs> and that store is like, hey, we're so sorry the elevator's broken. Uh, we'd love to give you a free late checkout or if it's a, if you really mess up big, like a free 60 minute massage, right? Um, and sends them to that store. You can also add items in that store that are discounted as well. If you're like, hey, we want to give you 40% off of whatever it is that we're selling. If it's like our custom sweatshirts, uh, things, something I love that I see people selling is aprons, especially for like family reunion destinations and everyone will buy a $75 apron, right? Um, it's kind of fun to have a little private store. We also see people add things to their stores. So when you say, I want to deactivate an item, it still stays on your dashboard, but your guests can't see it. So fun things that people do is they will add items that break frequently and they will have that off in their store. And if someone says, oh my gosh, I broke your wine glasses, they can turn on, they can activate that tile, just hit activate, send a link to the guests and be like, no worries, just here's the restocking fee for that item. So you don't have to go through this entire crazy dispute process to get paid out for that item. Or, uh, you know, people always lose our beach towels. They're constantly losing our beach towels. Hey, here's the charge for those three beach towels. And they're maybe not showing that store, but they have an extra store that might say, you know, however they want to name it, that you only share when it is necessary. I think someone had a question about like discounts for multiple properties. Just do you want to clarify your subscription prices or not for property? It's just for the whole account. Is that right? Yeah, it's for the whole account. Um, so if you can have, you can have one account and you can have 400 listings in that one account. You're going to see all of them. You have an account, a dashboard that say, here's all your stores. Here's the sales you're at. Here's the location of that. Here's the link for each of those. For pro users, uh, you get your first thousand dollars of commission free. So once you go over that, you either are going to say, yeah, I'm going to upgrade and I'm going to get the first five thousand dollars free. Right. Or you know what? It, we have people who use it, the host co that um, are still on a free model and they have 30 stores and they're like, you know what? This is extra revenue that comes in. I'm just going to let you have that 7% commission because it's a bonus for us. So um, depends on how you want to structure it. But yes, it is one user can have an unlimited number of listings under one account. Someone asked, I feel like asking more questions. Uh... Uh, I love it. Has anyone, ever, has, has anyone ever done grocery pickups? So I guess not delivery, but more like a pickup. Yes. So um, we have seen that in more rural areas where delivery doesn't work, right? Or people are like, I don't know what to get delivered here. And I think Death Valley is a good example of that. Um, if you have someone that will do the grocery, grocery delivery, add them for sure. Even if it's like a runner or a college student in the summer, and be like, hey, every time you get this request, can you fulfill this request, right? Um, there has to be clearly some coordination either with you as the host letting them in or coordination between them and the hosts and the guest, which again, they get the guest information as soon as the guest requests that item. Um, and they can determine what they're purchasing, right? So it might be, hey, I, um, I as a guest put in an order to Vaughn's um, my re my request is, can your runner pick it up and bring it to the house? Again, with groceries, you never want to have a delivery person that puts it on the front porch. I mean, it's like porch pirates or it melts or whatever the problem is with it. Um, I would also say, and my co-founder would disagree because I know he's done this a few times, but uh, push off the ordering to either the grocery store or a third party. We do have services I think in a few different parts of Florida where they have particular services that do this, but you don't want to deal with, oh, I asked for oat milk and not soy milk. 
you know, or like, oh, this crack, I thought these crackers were a bigger size box. Like you don't want to deal with any of that. Push that off to whatever third party and then charge for the pickup. If, if you have someone to do the pickup. Someone asked, they, um, they tried to, they emailed as a guest and it took like around 10 hours to get a response. So kind of like, what is the typical response time for either guests or hosts that are emailing the host go? Um, we have a support team that's on us hours. Uh, we should be doubling that as well so we can cover all of the other hours as well. Uh, but that is what is, it is generally nine to five at this point. So first of all, apologies that it took 10 hours. Um, I don't think it'll be instant because our team is not big enough to have it instant. But generally, if you email during those times, we will get back to you. Um, and hopefully that will be 24 hours soon. Yeah, so I guess the the intention is within business hours, same day response is the goal that you are usually fulfilling against. But obviously if you email at seven or outside or 10 PM, it might be the next day, right? Yeah. And um, if there's a vendor involved, um, you will generally have all of that vendor's information. If it is a host co-vendor like Massage, uh, we are the vendor. But if it is a different vendor, we will provide that vendor's information, their phone number to you. And we request all of our vendors, and this is why we have to vet them so much, they understand that they immediately contact the guest and say, this is me, this is my info, anything you need, or if you want to change something about this, or if you're running 30 minutes late, this is my phone number versus calling the host code. Uh, just two more questions here. Yeah. Someone said, I have an excluded SDR in the Hill Country. Would that qualify for Firewood S'mores package, for example? The Firewood S'mores stuff is all stuff that you as the operator would be setting up. So it sounds like it could be a compelling product for your location. So I think the, the question is just there, like, can you operationally fulfill it and restock it when you need to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, only do on-site items if you're going to be managing them. We do have ways with every single product to alert not only you, but a third party if you're running low. So, hey, cleaner, um, as long as you've communicated this, can you pick up 10 more beach towels to put in the, um, you know, when you're down to one, we'll alert you. You're down to one beach towel and put them in the closet that we sell them from, right? Same thing with firewood. Um, an important thing to note too, is that we can gate the information of the location of that product. Um, but uh, we cannot, and we can manage your inventory, but we can't see into, um, okay, well, someone ordered uh, one hangover kit and they took two, right? Generally, that's in the terms of service as well. If you take more than you've, than you've purchased, uh, you will be charged for that. But we need to know from you if that's the case. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, I'll leave one out and then I'll just replace it when we're out of that one thing. Firewood, I mean, most people are not taking seven bundles of firewood after they're, they're charged for one. Um, we've had very, very, very low incidents of anyone saying, oh, they took more of that thing. Because again, they're already pre-vetted. If you do have on-site items, some people, and we have um, designs of this that you can print out that say um, items are only for purchase. I would say don't leave like the case in which you're going to have products for sale that people are going to take or when you have a big box or you have a big bag of granola bars, right? Or a basket of something and it is not clear that it is for sale. We've seen that with children as well. If you're leaving something out that's edible as well, people are just going to take it and eat it. So make sure that you're only having things that are gated and also are just communicated that they are for sale if you have on-site items. I mean, we have we have um, one user that does a ton of sales and they have a store and they have custom oils that they made. They have bandanas, they have shirts, but they are specific. They also live on the property, right? So they are able to be like, okay, we know who's here. We know what just sold, et cetera. Last one is, are there PMS solutions that are better, best integrated to stay by host go? Uh, how are PMS integrations useful in upsells? I'll just say for StayFi, right, we have a ton of PMS integrations that are really for other things like collecting more guest data or getting address data to present into the host co. Um, there are not many, well, I'll say this, there are several PMS that offer some upselling features. Obviously, they're going to be more attuned towards stay alterations like late checkout stay extension. And I think like Andy mentioned, if your PMS handles that well and is changing all the date times, cleaning notifications, I think you generally recommend to stick to 
what works within that platform. I, I don't think most PMS have that feature, and it's typically more enterprise ones that have a upselling portal for uh, state alterations, right? Yeah, and we have um, we have PMS integrations right now with Owner Res, uh, Hospitable, which just went live this week. And we have quite a few more coming out, but a lot of those integrations are regarding the store creation that StayFi also does. Um, and then pushing back uh, custom automated messaging to your outgoing messaging. The biggest request with um, with PMS and the ones we're integrating with Future is writing to the notes of that booking. Hey, Arthur, asked, Arthur is having a mid-state clean on this day at this location. So at least that information is within the PMS, but currently it is mostly store creation. So those are all kind of phased and we have a ton of them coming out this year, inspired by Arthur, by the way. <laughs> well, that was all 28 questions, Annie. So I really appreciate <laughs> your extra time. Um, yeah, anything else you want to share before we, we call it a day today? Uh, that's it, except um, you're always welcome to join on our website. There's a thing that says get started. Even if you've gotten started, you can join a demo. We do a demo every day. And a lot of those demos are just people saying, I already have a store and I have a question. So you can reach us every single day during those demos. And again, you can just write us at support at the host.co and say, hey, I use StayFi and I have this question. And either we can answer it via email or we can always, our support team can always jump on a call with you. Yep. And likewise, at stayfi.com slash demo, you can book a one-on-one -on -one demo or attend our weekly webinar. And I would encourage if you're a StayFi user, definitely turn on the host code in your StayFi account, take a look, uh, customize the items, and then, you know, there's no charge for the host code. So there's, there's no risk in setting it up and seeing what it can do to, you know, enhance the bottom line for your business. Uh, yeah. So thanks again for everyone. Yeah. Anything else, Andy? Okay. This is only the last thing because I think for this crowd in particular, um, there are a fair amount of people that are like, oh, I got to customize my store. Oh, I got to change all these things. I got to do this. Somewhat true, but because everything in your store is protected through a request, everything that is preloaded, um, the best thing to do is just start, right? Just start selling and seeing how people behave in the store. Because again, it's all on a request. You can say, nope, not available. You can say, oh, cool. Look, people want this thing. Your guests also have a chat bot so they can ask requests. The requests come to us. We share them with you. Um, but just getting started as a property manager, obviously you're always putting out fires, often literally putting out fires. So, um, you know, you having it be like, oh, I just got to get to that. I got to get to that. We don't want to be, I think, again, back to the easy and fast, something you want to get to. You can just get started and then modify as you go is always something we suggest. Yeah, that sounds great. You know, yeah. they don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, right? Yeah. Just get started. Just same thing with email marketing. We tell people start sending something and then you can always optimize over time. Awesome, Andy. Well, thanks for everyone's attention and time today. And like I said, we'll send out the recording and publish this so everyone will have access uh, to all the questions and everything we covered today. And uh, feel free to reach out to either of us if you have uh, more questions. Thanks again, Annie. Thank you.